but first I want to cut them down to length. The ends of these are rough as well, so I'm going to start by scoring up the ends. While I've still got them lined up, I'm just going to clamp them together and then I can cut all three to the same length at the same time. I've got these boards laid out to join up into a panel. And I've got them lined up on the ends. I'm going to make some marks across them and then cut a slot at each one of those points with a biscuit joiner. Now each one of those marks has a slot cut in it. There's a biscuit that's going to go down in each one of those to lock together the two pieces and that'll keep them aligned vertically. I'm also going to add tons of glue to all of this surface so that everything will glue up into a single panel. So after I got that 2x6 put in the wall, I covered it up with drywall, put on some mud, did a lot of sanding, then some primer, then some paint, and now it's at a point where basically it looks like I didn't do anything at all except that that wall is now ready to hold up the sink. So the next thing before we can put the sink on the wall is to paint the underside of it. This is a cast iron sink, so the underside is not really meant to be displayed. It's kind of rough, it's inconsistently gray, and so we're just going to spray paint it black. And before we can do that, we got to mask off the parts that we don't want to paint. While I'm waiting on the paint to dry on the sink, I came back down because these panels are now fully glued up. I've got this one, I made a duplicate, and I made a shorter one to use on the other side of the room, but they're all basically the same. At this point, it is a good solid panel, and I need to clean up the outside faces using the planer, but it's a little bit too wide. But first, I'm gonna run these through the table saw, get them down to the right width, and then take them through the planer and get both sides really smooth. After these came out of the planer, I sanded everything smooth, including the corners, because they were pretty sharp, and now I'm gonna finish them. For that, I'm gonna use a couple of coats of Wipe-On Poly. It's time to make the brackets to go on the outside of this. These are gonna be made out of a single piece of steel, cut and folded, and to try it out, to get the angles right, I decided to first make it in cardboard. So I put this piece of cardboard here, figured out the angles and the length of the whole piece. Now I'm gonna go transfer this to the steel and cut it out. I got the corners cut off of this piece, but it actually needs to fold up in two opposite directions. So I'm gonna score this piece to thin out the material, because this is pretty thick, so that it will fold easier. Once we get it folded up, I'll go back and weld that corner to re-strengthen it. I've got those welded up and they are plenty strong now to hold the shelf. So I'm gonna go back with the grinder, smooth off all the surfaces and then paint these black. Then I just have to make a whole bunch more for the rest of the shelves. I've got the shelf panel all glued up, I've got the brackets all finished and painted, and now it's time to put them together to get them ready to hang. I've got the shelf setting on its back on a table, then I'm going to set up the bracket onto the shelf. This will show me where it needs to sit so I can mark the holes and pre-drill them, because they're going to be right at the end of the boards and I don't want to risk splitting them. Now we're ready.
ready to put the shelves up above the washer and dryer. These are going to fit right there and we space them out so that they hit the studs both in the corner and down here on the end. We've got these long lag screws with a nice black flat head and so we're going to put these in directly into the studs. All right, let's see if I can sit on it. Ready? Plenty strong. So for the shorter shelf that's gonna go over in this corner, there's not a stud where we need one to be. So we've got some drywall anchors to put in, and this particular type will hold 80 pounds each, and I'm gonna have two of them stacked on top of each other, and then the other end of the shelf is gonna be going into studs into the corner. I've got this where I want it, and have made sure that it's level, and I'm gonna mark these holes because I'm gonna have to sink the anchor in the wall. We got the sink hung up and the plumbing connected for the water supply. Now we've got to hook up the drain. There's a P-trap that's already here. It's just old PVC, so we're gonna replace it with some nicer looking metal. And so we just have to make a few connections to get all this hooked up. I've got the drain all hooked up and we're about to test it. And I did have to do quite a bit of stuff on this to get the drain to connect to the plumbing in the house. If you get a sink like this, just be prepared to have to adjust from the output of this to the input of your drain system. All right, let's try it out. The old cabinets in the room were in perfectly good shape. They were just outdated. So I sanded down every surface of every side so that we could paint them. I got a really cool paint sprayer at Lowe's recently, and so I wanted to try it out. It worked perfectly and made quick work of getting primer on this. As you can see, we've moved everything out of the room now, including the washer and dryer, and that's because it's time to lay down tile. We're going to do a bits video all about laying tile in this room, so if you want a lot more details, be sure to go check that one out. Now, the first step in here is to get the floor completely clean. So this is the underlayment we're gonna put down underneath the tile, and it's a decoupling membrane, which is pretty cool because it separates the tile from the subfloor. So if the wood subfloor tends to expand and contract a little bit, it won't crack the tile. I found that it's actually easier to roll this stuff upside down because it's easier to